Hello, everybody. I'm Roberto, and I'm super happy to be here in uh, Sweden, in Stockholm. And uh, today we will talk about uh, functional programming. And uh, you know, I put uh, the uh, Donny Kruger meme. And uh, just uh, two things. This is will be the today talk, and uh, putting back the fun in functional programming. But uh, just uh, this. Uh, uh, meme basically it's not meant to be something like uh, you need to be a genius or stupid or stuff like that. It's about uh, you know personal journey when you start uh, and when you are finally understand functional programming. And also, this is not really applying to I mean to uh, to Haskell. If you use Haskell, you need to use Monas everywhere. I mean, is there any Haskell programmer here? Oh, uh, just one. Okay, I'm sorry for you, but uh, everybody else. Uh, <laughs> uh, I can do some jokes about Haskell, but no, I mean, I, I like Haskell. I work in Haskell, but um, let's um, let's start. Well, what just I'm saying is that basically, functional programming is meant to be well, it's meant to be fun because when uh, something is fun, uh, you are more productive, and when I'm getting fun, I can write better code, or, or maybe because I'm writing better code, I, I got in fun. But uh, the point is, uh, uh, it doesn't have to be something complicated. And uh, at the end, uh, if you start talking about this kind of stuff, like functor, monos, applicative, you know, they, they just become like a golden hammer, and you, you need to put everywhere. But OK, let's talk a bit about uh, um, last year, uh, 2023, was a, a very important year for me. One reason was that uh, I bought a house in uh, Wuhan, uh, Japan, and uh, I wanted to go there, but this is completely unrelated to today's talk. And uh, the other reason is that finally I published my book. That was, uh, I mean, it took much longer than also, I was really trying to make a smaller book and I totally failed on that. <laughs> it's a 426 page plus uh, the introduction. So uh, the goal was to make everything 250. So it's a total failure. But apart from that, it's not a bad book. So I have a copy here if someone wants. But uh <laughs> anyway, uh, that book for me was a kind of dream. and. Uh, you know, the problem with the dreams is that when uh, your dreams became true, there is always some kind of disappointment. <laughs> and in this case, uh, the disappointment is that uh, I finally finished the book, a lot of revision, and then at the end uh, I realized, okay, you know what, I will write a different book <laughs> if I had to rewrite now. The term is quite common, so, but uh, not saying that is a bad book, but uh, this talk is a bit about uh, what I will uh, like to present things a bit uh, different in this book. And um, basically, the uh, functional programming and object-oriented programming start with the single things about uh, we, you need that to how we can solve a big problem. And uh, in, um, in functional programming, basically, now actually, let's, uh, let's say, let's uh, start uh, how would, would you solve a big problem, generally speaking? You have a very big problem. What will be your first uh, approach? How to make it uh, solvable? Yeah, exactly. So try to break it uh, in a smaller problem. And this is what uh, both uh, functional programming and uh, object-oriented programming are trying to do. But they are using kind of different technology, well, different uh, uh, solution, let's say, or different approach. But uh, they are not really trying to make uh, uh, different, I mean, the, the goal is the same. And uh, what is more, the goal of, uh, um, let's say, having good code, uh, having code with a good uh, internal uh, uh, quality, is more or less the same. So there is a lot of uh, things that uh, make sense, uh, you know, uh, write a small function, uh, uh, make uh, the intent clear, uh, easy to read. Uh, I mean, this stuff uh, actually is applied for object-oriented and functional programming. It's not that if you start functional programming, you start writing co things completely different. There's a lot of uh, things in common in the good code. And uh, some people, uh, who knows who these uh, two guys are? 
yeah, my Michael Feda and uh, Dave Farley. And they are two, I mean, kind of inspiration for me, especially uh, uh, many years ago when I started. And basically, have, they did uh, this video in where they said basically, you know, functional programming is more or less the same than object orienting when uh, done uh, right. Um, well, I beg to disagree. <laughs> there is a lot of things in common, but uh, the design is very different. And uh, basically, to, to just give you a first, uh, like we will look a bit better, but uh, object-oriented programming is a bit like, uh, you know, you try to make something with clay, you try to model things, you try to make it flexible. Functional programming is like uh, you try to build something with Lego, so you have a kind of constraint, and uh, things have to fix together. And uh, this, uh, uh, in my opinion, is one of the best books about uh, to learn uh, properly object uh, design. And basically, this book uh, is about, uh, you know, you try to make, uh, to split the responsibility between uh, your object. So there is, uh, in this case, uh, a transfer order. This is an example from the book, and then you split uh, how you model uh, the pump, uh, the manifold. Uh, I mean, I'm not a plumber, but I mean, this is uh, trying to model your project uh, in uh, your code. And uh, Hanan Kay, who knows who is Hanan Kay? I mean, is uh, the uh, very few people. I mean, it's really important, guys. <laughs> Alan Kay is the guy who did the uh, small talk uh, and basically invented the object-oriented programming. And uh, by the way, he, he has a great page on Quora. He responds a lot of questions. It's a lot of fun to read uh, uh, his uh, answer. And uh, But basically, when he invented object-oriented programming, he was thinking uh, a bit about uh, uh, biological structure. So objects are a bit like uh, cells that are like a computer in a network, stuff that communicate with each other as an internal state. This was uh, the idea behind uh, object-oriented programming and still a very good uh, way to model your object-oriented stuff. Functional design, instead, uh, this is another very important um, uh, paper. Uh, uh, is uh, instead uh, is the, the op not not the opposite, but it's very different because they say functional programming basically means that uh, you write a lot of function. I mean, it's, there is no you know the name give away. <laughs> so functional programming has a lot of functions. So you you start uh, using a lot of function, and uh, you have a function as also as input, function as output. So you treat function as data. So function that modify other functions. So you have a function all the way around. And uh, they are not uh, just any function, but uh, what we call a uh, pure function. And uh, pure function basically are just uh, a function that is a bit like a mathematical. So it just takes uh, the input and output uh, to produce a result. Uh, so it cannot uh, assess uh, singleton or IO or anything else. So this idea. Proof function is a function that uh, takes uh, his uh, argument as an input and then uh, produce an output and doesn't change uh, the system in any other way. Uh, of course, uh, I mean, we will see later, I, I agree. But uh, the, um, this, the point is that uh, so far that the function are pure, we can combine together, we can have uh, these things called referential transparency. That means that uh, you can always replace a function with uh, the, its result, uh, and uh, because you know that uh, there are no other things. And this uh, basically eliminates a major source of bugs, because uh, you don't really need to think about uh, what is the status of the system. Every single function basically responds on its own, its input, its output. If there is a bug, it must be in that function. You don't have to think about, yeah, but maybe b because there was some state uh, here and there. Uh, and uh, okay, finally, why Kotlin? This talk will be in Kotlin, and um, why is cho choosing Kotlin? Uh, nothing about the against the other uh, from the other languages on JGVM, the other program. Oh, how many of you use Kotlin? Wow, there is a few people. <laughs> Happy to see that. 
I'm using Kotlin in the backend uh, for the last five years, uh, probably on, on only Kotlin, I mean, in my daily job. I work for an investment bank in London, so it's not a small problem, a, a small team or a small project, and uh, we are working in uh, backend. And we are very happy, just uh, to say. <laughs> but uh, the, the other choice in the um, JVM uh, world that will be basically ETA, uh, Java or Scala. Well, there is also Clojure if you like a dynamic language, but I don't think uh, great that, that will be a great fit for our job. So Scala is, uh, I use Scala. They say that it's not that fun, <laughs> in my opinion. It's very complicated, it's slow, and it's very hard to master. And also there is a, a very uh, steep curve to also Port the people, there are kind of uh, different communities inside. I mean, there's a lot of issue. But uh, Java is a good uh, choice. I mean, um, I love Java as a language. I probably work uh, still uh, much longer in, in Java than in Kotlin. But still, uh, if you are using uh, functional stuff, uh, you know, you wanted to just uh, get something from uh, in a collection, it's just three lines of code, uh, I agree. But uh, in Kotlin, just one line. And uh, you know, there is a lot of stuff around. Uh, and uh, it's much easier also to read. It's not only that uh, the length, uh, but also the intention is much clearer what, what they are going to do. And then the other problem is a uh, nullable type. In, J in Java, you, know, you have a function that returns an integer. This is in the signature, but the function can also return a null which is not an integer, so it's kind of a breach of contact. Uh, so, okay, I mean, you can do put in the if around, uh, you can uh, put in the annotation, or you can use uh, optional, uh, and you can do definitely do that, and it's okay. But in Kotlin, it's just uh, out of the box, uh, and uh, you just declare the type as a uh, nullable, and the compiler will uh, check for you and making sure that you cannot have a nullable, nullable uh, pointer exception. And the other point is that uh, in functional programming, as we said, there are a lot of functions. And uh, so you have a function that uh, take two, f in this case, a uh, compose takes two functions as input and return one function as output. And uh, in Java, you have to write uh, this stuff uh, like this. Now the apply, I don't mind, is uh, okay. But still, uh, the declaration is quite, uh, it's quite hard to read. In Kotlin, you can have uh, this uh, shortened version with uh, the arrows, and uh, it's much easier to read, uh, much clearer. So that's, the, but this is the only reason, it's more like, uh, okay, it's a bit uh, nicer. There are also other stuff in Kotlin which are nicer, like not having semicolon extension <laughs> function, stuff like that. But uh, um, nothing really that affects uh, your, um, uh, I mean, anything that is uh, in this talk or my book uh, can also be done in uh, Java, definitely. And I love Java, to be honest. I don't have anything against it. So, let, oh, so enough for the discussion. And um, so this is a very, very small uh, kind of uh, object-oriented MVC uh, Kotlin uh, uh, application server. I mean, it's kind of stupid. Uh, the code uh, at the end is on GitHub. So, so basically, this is kind of MB MVC pattern. Uh, so we have uh, the service uh, with access to database. Uh, we have a controller. We have a view. And uh, we put all together. and. Uh, and the HTTP route that we call the stuff. This is uh, Kato as a web service and uh, Expose as a database, if you want, as a library. And then the controller, basically, the actual logic is the controller get uh, the user page ID. And uh, if we look at the controller code, uh, this, of course, I mean, I have to put everything uh, in a few slides, so it's a super minimal, but uh, you can uh, mentally expand uh, to a big project. They are all uh, more or less like this. Um, you know, controller take uh, reference to user and the view. Then uh, you get uh, the uh, request parameter from uh, the um, 
request, uh, it pass it to the user service to get uh, the user. If uh, the user is not null, uh, uh, ask the view to enter the page. But this is was uh, object oriented, having MVC object, uh, I mean collaboration between controller uh, model view. Instead, in uh, functional programming, we try to think uh, in morphism, in the transformation. So instead of uh, trying to model the entity that make uh, our problem, we try to focus in on the flow. And uh, not much on the data, but on the data transformation in each step of the flow. And this is also why functional programming is a, a great uh, fit for kind of uh, uh, application server, I mean web server. Because a web server basically is just something that takes a HTTP request and transforms in HTTP response at the end, if you look at uh, I. Or if it's uh, some uh, messaging, uh, it's something that to take a message from one queue, produce a message from the other queue. So this kind of uh, program that work in this way are really, really a good fit uh, for functional programming. I'm not saying that functional programming solves everyf everything. I mean, I'm, I'm not an expert on video games or UI, and those are problems that probably uh, object-oriented is best of it, uh, a better fit. But uh, for sure, for the stuff that I'm doing every day <laughs> for many years, solving problems on the big uh, backend uh, that uh, take uh, some input and uh, uh, produce some output, the functional programming is really great because uh, you can it may always uh, split the flow and see this transformation between the data. So the first step are relatively easy. Uh, you know, this is a talk is about fun, so <laughs> let's do something simple, which may not be easy, but it's simple. So we have uh, this uh, um, user view, and basically, we, we can okay just throw it away the object uh, user view and just have uh, the simple function. And uh, in this case, it was uh, simple because the uh, user view had uh, no real uh, internal state, uh, so it was just a matter of take uh, the method and transform uh, in a uh, function. That's f easy. And now we want to do the same uh, with uh, user service. And uh, yeah, these are the functions. And the user service is a bit uh, tricky because uh, it uses this framework that uh, uses a kind of singleton, not a, use a singleton to assess the database to put a transaction. So even if uh, the function uh, get a user doesn't declare any input parameter, is actually referring to a remote uh, singleton. And this is not uh, a pure function. It, it not, not only is not a pure function because it goes uh, on the database, but also because uh, it does uh, in a kind of a hidden, uh, sneaky way, we at least wanted to make uh, clear. So uh, what we can do, we, ma we can make uh, the transaction uh, kind of explicit. So instead of uh, saying that the transaction uh, magically gets some singleton, we say, okay, now that the function we declare, this is um, it basically became an input parameter. It's called a, a receiver if it's on the left of the dot, but technically speaking, it's uh, just a, a parameter. So make uh, the transaction explicit. And at this point, uh, we can also remove uh, the uh, service at all. Because uh, in this case, uh, basically, what we do, uh, we remove uh, the service uh, from uh, the controller, and uh, we put uh, the transaction in the uh, main, which is not great, but at least uh, you know uh, we can uh, make it uh, explicit. And um, and now we don't have uh, any more the uh, controller service and uh, view. So, okay, the talk is finished. Uh, thank you, everybody. It was very easy. <laughs> so, I mean, you, you can say, oh, man, come, come on, Uberto. You, you just uh, did uh, some, uh, in, uh, I mean, you inline some uh, function. Uh, it's not uh, hard. Uh, that uh, is kind of cheating. But uh, that's the point. It's simple. I told you, I mean, functional programming is fun. It's simple. <laughs> but, of course, there are, uh, it's not only this. I mean, I wrote the 500 page for some reason. <laughs> 
but uh, the what we really want uh, is anyway this uh, simplicity and um, the point that uh, I probably will change uh, now in the book uh, is that uh, this thing that uh, you don't need uh, to put uh, the theory before in in the book I try to make uh, the theory the, to explain things uh, f first uh, with the problem then the theory and then the solution but actually I think now that is easier also because I, I actually did uh, some uh, workshop I mean teaching people this uh, kind of stuff and I realized that it's easy first uh, you show the problem then you have the solution and only when people are kind of uh, um, confident uh, and uh, fully got uh, the solution that you can start uh, looking at uh, the theory it's a bit like uh, if you wanted to swim uh, you don't uh, start t telling people fluid or dynamics i mean you go in the pool uh, you start swimming and then if you want to become a, a olympic champion you probably have to study a bit of a fluid or, or your trainer i don't know <laughs> but something like that but you study that after and um, so basically the first step anyway in uh, using functional programming is transforming everything in function and uh, getting rid of uh, this idea of object uh, talking with each other. And now th let's uh, see quite uh, interesting things about uh, Andrew Ayers. And uh, as uh, all the other talk, uh, to I think uh, now everything is uh, image uh, generated by ChatGPT, so <laughs> we can thank uh, uh, ChatGPT. But uh, so this is how the code uh, is uh, to get uh, the user page. And uh, Basically, uh, you can see that uh, there are uh, multiple returns in the code because uh, we in this case, basically, we more or less assume that null uh, is an error. So if uh, there is no null uh, idea at the beginning, means that uh, there is an error with, uh, with the, the URL. If uh, the, the database return and no user does me an, an error on, on the user ID and stuff like that. So the code is a lot of if, uh, multiple returns, and then also the error are not great errors because uh, we completely swallow, for example, if uh, there is um, an error on the database. And also, if uh, there is a, an exception from database, a connection down and stuff like that, we, we skip uh, this completely and we go to the uh, uh, you know, to, to the exception handler, so getting something bad to the user. And um, also, generally speaking, exceptions are not uh, a, a good way to use in a functional programmer, uh, unless uh, we are really talking something uh, exceptional, like uh, there is no memory or stuff like that, stuff that you wanted to sh stop your application, divide by zero, I mean, stuff that you cannot uh, uh, recover at all. But uh, for stuff uh, like uh, this, I mean, the database uh, ret returns some error or uh, the ID in the URL is not um, correct. Uh, it's something normal that we want to handle and uh, we don't want uh, to use an uh, exception for that. We want uh, to make it uh, explicit in the function. In this way, it's much easier to compose functions together. And uh, what we can do, basically, is creating a type, and the type can be either a success or a failure. So the abstract type, the uh, seed class in this case, but it can be an interface, is just something that can be either a success or a failure. And uh, is a generic uh, on this kind of success. So it can be an integer, or it can be a list, or a user, or whatever. And if it's a failure, it's a failure. So the, there is no uh, n nothing about uh, the failure that uh, can save them. Um, also, there are, uh, this is a bit of the code that we are going to use. So I just have some convenient uh, constructor. And then we can uh, actually describe uh, exactly the error that uh, we have uh, in our uh, application. Which is something um, useful because uh, you can do the same with uh, uh, exceptions, but because the exception uh, usually just uh, explodes, uh, you cannot really, I mean, uh, you can do with uh, checked exceptions, but nobody really uses checked exceptions anymore. So uh, you, you cannot really 
usually you don't put a, a lot of information in the exception. Instead, in this uh, functional error, you can actually put a lot of information. And uh, so our code, uh, basically, that uh, goes on the database. Uh, this is, yeah, is the code uh, that uses the in implicit transaction that now is uh, explicit. We, we can uh, try, catch, uh, and then return uh, uh, as a failure. So the, the total result is a result now, and uh, not just a list of users, but a result of a list of users. And uh, if it's a success, we return as a success case. If otherwise, uh, we create a DB error, and uh, we trap the original exception, and so we have uh, the result as uh, a failure. So nothing uh, too fancy. And uh, we can try to use this. Uh, and that means that uh, this code uh, from here basically became uh, something like that. I mean, you can change a bit. But uh, we get rid of uh, the um, multiple returns. But still, uh, it's not great code, in my opinion. So we have uh, this uh, finally throw exception. Because of course, at some point, uh, I mean, we can pass uh, the result, uh, for example, from one function to another. But at some point, we don't want uh, the result anymore. So for the moment, uh, in tal in the so far that we uh, see a better way, we can just uh, throw an exception in case of failure, which kind of defy the whole point, but is uh, just temporary fix. And the other thing that we uh, want uh, to see that basically here we still have the if, uh, and we even have a when. So actually, I think the readability of the code went a bit bad. So OK, we get rid of exception, but it's not a great code. So we want to use a, uh, to do something different. And uh, to have an idea, uh, to, to explain, I think uh, it's a bit of a, you know, the, in the bullying, uh, you have uh, uh, you know the the pins, uh, and uh, you have <laughs> this lane where the ball goes when uh, you know it, it's a zero point. It, by the way, do you know the name of the lane? I I, I thought uh, I have to check before the talk, but I forgot. So <laughs> I don't know. But uh, anyway, I, if you throw the ball, and uh, this idea is that uh, you have uh, your chain of transformation, but if any chain uh, goes uh, in a failure, basically goes on the failure lane. And uh, no other transformation will be applied. So this is the idea that we try to, to make work. Um, and so we have this uh, something uh, type A that uh, became a type B, then became a type C. That You can imagine something like A is uh, like the user ID, B is the user, C is uh, the final page, or something like that. And if any point uh, in this uh, chain of transformation there is an error, it goes uh, on the failure lane. And then uh, it will automatically go on the end, uh, and uh, no other transformation, no other things happen. And so to, to do this, uh, basically, we need uh, to transform our result. So if we have a result of a t, we want to transform a result of a u, for example. And we need a function that goes from t to u. So basically, we have a, a generic. This, uh, regardless that the result is a silly class, it's uh, for any generic. And a function that can change the type of the generic. Um, it may be, seems a bit strange. But uh, it's uh, actually the same thing that uh, you do when you have a list uh, of int and you transform in a list of string. But you can do it with any generics. And uh, the, the actual code is uh, really super simple, because you just need to say, if it's a success, apply the function. Otherwise, ignore it. No, nothing to do. Absolutely nothing uh, difficult. And uh, this is how you apply. And so basically now the get uh, user page start with uh, a, a function that say fail if it's null, just to make uh, a nice uh, error message. And uh, sorry, 
and then uh, it, it goes uh, in a series of uh, transformation. At the end, basically, we still have a result, and uh, we need to provide uh, an HTML content. But uh, that only means that uh, we need to transform our, um, I mean, if uh, we have a, a, a success, it's okay. We already have uh, the, the first transformer transform the user head in the user, the second transform in the HTML context, and uh, at the end, so we have a result of HTML context, uh, and uh, we, we can just uh, uh, show the HTML context. If we have an error, we need uh, to transform also the error in HTML context. So at the end, uh, we put uh, together the failure and uh, the success. And so we have this method of uh, recover that is a bit of uh, the opposite of a uh, transformer because uh, it uh, transforms the error in the same kind of result. So in this case, uh, if it's a success, we don't do anything. If it's a failure, we apply the transformation. And so in this way, we, we got uh, rid of the tool and uh, we have uh, this chain of transformation. But there is still a throw here. And that is because uh, we have the, a result uh, and uh, get used by the return another result. So when uh, we apply transformation, uh, a result uh, to a function that return another result, uh, we got a result of result. Instead, we want just a single result. So we need something else. OK, let's uh, look at uh, And uh, we need a function that basically, we have a result, uh, a function that returns another result, uh, and we want to bind the two results together. And uh, again, um, it's nothing that difficult. I mean, it can be a bit. Uh, uh, challenge to uh, after lunch to think all this stuff uh, I perfectly understand but uh, it's, it's nothing uh, magical it's nothing super complicated uh, you have a, a generic and uh, you wanted to apply a function to the generic and in this case basically if it's a success we apply the value value the the, fun the function sorry and uh, we just return the result of the function uh, if it's a failure, instead we don't do anything. So it's not uh, that different from uh, um, from the previous uh, transform. And, uh, and so this is uh, basically adding uh, this bind to our result. Uh, we have uh, this uh, chain of uh, transformation. And so this is uh, the uh, uh, get user page uh, how it is. And uh, just uh, to make it uh, kind of nicer, we also define a, a small function to make it more uniform. So you have uh, this uh, kind of alignment. And uh, because this uh, it, uh, is uh, the implicit uh, lambda parameter, we can also just uh, remove that and uh, use it as a reference. And so the total result, uh, the final result, pun <laughs> intended, is that we transform the previous code to the second one, the one on the bottom. And this is what I say that uh, it's just a simple uh, fact of uh, adding the function together. And uh, I mean, I really like uh, this kind of stuff. I really enjoy <laughs> transforming uh, stuff, uh, thinking about the type, uh, and uh, putting stuff together, and then trying to simplify the code uh, from uh, something uh, like uh, on the top, uh, something that I mean, require to think about the uh, global state, uh, is uh, this uh, uh, transformation and uh, uh, result return uh, to some something that is just uh, a chain of transformation. And now, I mean, I can tell you that uh, the result uh, is a monad. Uh, who, who know the word monad? Okay, yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of a scary thing. Oh, the monad, <laughs> You know, uh, super complicated. No, it's just, uh, just a generic uh, that uh, can, can be transformed in another generic, basically. It's a uh, sup uh, uh, super simple thing. 
and I, for some reason it got super complicated and people got super smug about, yeah, I know monads or stuff like that, but it's really almost boring stuff. It just, uh, <laughs> the important thing is uh, putting together. And, uh, but on the other side, uh, there is a lot of uh, interesting theory about monads and stuff like that, how to use that. But that is uh, something that once you got the familiar and uh, you are passionate about, you can study. And uh, you, you there is a lot of things that you can learn. Uh, there is uh, this uh, theorem and how to stuff. I, I mean, I really enjoy this stuff, but uh, I don't think it's uh, useful uh, to write uh, code uh, right now. I mean, it's kind of useful uh, for designer, for library, when you are uh, advanced stuff. But if you just want to, uh, you have uh, your simple program and you want uh, to use a functional programming, don't worry about monads. Just uh, think about the generic. You, tra you transform it generic to not generic. And having fun. I mean, the whole point is having fun. Uh, do simple stuff and combining function until uh, you get what you want. And, you know, I'm very passionate about this stuff. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, at the end, uh, basically, in Kotlin, you can, um, well, also in Java, uh, you can reference the function. It's a bit uh, simple. Uh, we still have the transaction. What do we do with the transaction? This is a bit more complicated. Uh, and, you know, there is still this book, I mean... Uh <laughs> There's a lot of things to say, but uh, let's say um, a bit of a, let's approach the problem. There are basically two, probably the two ways to uh, approach this problem. The first is uh, called a partial application, which is kind of a functional dependence injection. And the idea is that uh, if you have a, like a function that take uh, a, b, and return a c, you can transform in a function that take an a and return a function that take a b and return a c which is also something that is kind of, uh, I mean, the implementation is uh, trivial, but uh, if you are not used to think about it uh, this way, I mean, it took me a while to, to get it, even if it's a super simple one line of code. And, uh, and then when uh, you get it, uh, wow, it is everywhere. <laughs> and of course, this is true for two, but it can be for four, five, six, uh, any number of parameters. You can always transform any number of parameter in a function that return in a function, return another function, stuff like that to apply. This is a proven mathematical theorem. And um, I mean, ju just say, saying about the theory, just a little aside, there is uh, this thing that uh, if you, A, B is kind of equivalent to something like uh, A to B to C, and you change a bit of the parentheses on the right side uh, that are not that important, it's a kind of saying that uh, a pair of A, B is kind of uh, equivalent, uh, not exactly, but a bit, to A to B. So a pair is kind of equivalent to a function. I, I, it's, uh, th there is a relation between these two things, and the relation is called uh, a joint function. And uh, I'm not going to explain now, <laughs> but uh, this kind of things is really exciting about uh, uh, category theory, about the theory of uh, functional programming. But uh, it's not something that, uh, oh, I read uh, the adjunction function, now I have to find a problem where to apply them or stuff like that. <laughs> but anyway, let's uh, stay on the problem. We have A, B, and C. Uh, a, B, and we don't see. In, in our case, A is uh, the transaction, B is uh, the input, and C. And we wanted to make basically a function that uh, take uh, the transaction at the beginning and return a kind of pure function. It's not really pure, but it works like a pure function. Mm. So we make uh, the database explicit, uh, and then we do the apply ap application. So we get the uh, we take a, a, um, a function that take a, a, a transaction and the user ID, and we return a function that only take the user ID, because we inject the transaction, basically. And in this way, basically, the, um, this uh, all user page from database 
It's not a pure function, meaning that it actually goes to the database, but the rest of the system can, can be a pure function for the rest of the system. So that stay impure, but all the rest of the system stay pure, because uh, you only get uh, that function is pure. You, you kind of, uh, you know, you put a kind of mask on top. And this is totally lacit in functional programming. So from uh, the um, user page from DB, from uh, the rest of the system, uh, this is a, a pure function. And uh, you can test uh, w one of the big advantage of having all pure function that is very easy to test, for example, and very easy to compose, and uh, you don't need to put, put up a mocks and stuff like that. And uh, but in the actual uh, main uh, is actually loaded uh, with uh, impure bit. But at least it is a kind of uh, managed. It's not something sneaky. It's something. Okay, the, the other way to handle this stuff uh, is uh, create uh, a kind of, uh, you know, generic, uh, that is a monad, around the transaction runner. So basically, in this way, you create uh, your whole uh, application as a, a kind of a chain, well, not a chain, uh, some, uh, uh, something that happens on, on the transaction. And then at the end, uh, you run it uh, uh, at the end. So it's, uh, it's a powerful way, because in this way, you, for example, you can make sure that you, uh, um, you can have uh, multiple things that goes in the same transaction. You can do something like uh, um, hold back and stuff like that. But it's much more complicated to use that simple partial application. So in, in this specific case, I definitely want to use that. But for more complicated program using, this is called the reader monad, but you don't need to know that. <laughs> uh, it, it has uh, some advantage. It, it's much more powerful, but also much more complicated. And it's not easy because uh, you have a result uh, of uh, this uh, transaction runner, or you, and then uh, you finish having a result of a transaction runner over the result. I mean, this is not something that you want, so you need to move uh, the genex around. Yeah, you can do that, but it's, uh, it's a bit of a mess. So um, my point is uh, chase the simplicity. <laughs> having fun uh, with the functional programming. And uh, this is uh, my house. Uh, this was uh, during the renovation. We, we, uh, it's, it's better now. <laughs> but uh, you know, in Japan, uh, they have uh, this uh, great way, m the traditional houses are very simple, uh, modular system, uh, and uh, they can make a very elegant uh, and uh, great uh, looking uh, architecture, but uh, with a very simple few rules. And I think this is the point of uh, functional programming. I've been uh, trying to make a great program uh, with a simple function, just uh, combining simple function, not trying to make uh, complicated stuff uh, for, for the stuff. And uh, yeah, and having fun because I, f I really find that uh, functional programming or uh, being able to think about the program in morphism and look at the data and try to modify the data can be really uh, rewarding and uh, having a lot of fun with that without uh, making difficult, uh, I mean, uh, trying to make uh, things complicated. Trying to make it as simple as possible is always the best way. So, uh, thank you very much, and uh, if there is any questions, Everybody's sleeping now, probably. <laughs> um, just a couple of things. I mean, I, apart from the functional programming stuff, uh, I really enjoy working with Kotlin on the back end. Uh, and uh, the um, kind of uh, middle way, I mean, b without uh, being completely functional 100%, uh, but uh, this uh, kind of, uh, find a good uh, compromise, uh, keeping things simple, but still uh, be able to use uh, um, f uh, a bit of functional programming, uh, but also a bit of uh, non-functional programming when it's so much easier to use. Uh. And there is a lot of other stuff uh, that, of course, uh, I mean, how to make a configuration uh, work, uh, how to have a log login is a very interesting problem. 
And, uh, but also a very uh, great uh, way to, I mean, um, to open up possibilities and uh, logging in functional programming uh, with the, this error can make much uh, more controller way to, to have the logs in, in production as, as, as you want. So this stuff is stuff at the time basically and would work in every day. And uh, uh, if you want to contact me uh, on well, here in the conference, but also on Twitter or in uh, Medium. And uh, I mentioned that I wrote a book. <laughs> so thank you, everybody. Uh, any question, you can also ask me. Thank you. And Please remember to rate the talk in the app. <laughs>